Hey class, and welcome to Wednesday. We are gonna be doing another technique. We're using watercolors today, so make sure to open up to an empty page. At the very top, we're gonna to start by writing watercolor techniques. Watercolor is spelled W A T E R C O L O R. And techniques is still written in your book, but I'll spell it T E C H N I Q U E S. Watercolor techniques. Now you're pretty used to doing four techniques, but today we are only going to learn three watercolor techniques. So we're gonna break the book into three different sections. The first technique that we will do is a watercolor resist. And that is gonna be using the crayons. So we're gonna write watercolor resist. Once you have that written, you can then pick any color crayon you would like. You can design this however you would like. I started to draw clouds that were raining because it's raining outside today. But if you just wanna draw lines or swirls, that's completely up to you. Make sure you are working quickly because remember these Wednesdays, we only have a short amount of time. Next, we're gonna add the watercolors. Now you have extra paint brushes at your table, so do not use the paintbrush that is in your watercolor tray. We're gonna be using the green paint brushes. So you're gonna swirl around in the water because they're watercolors, they need water to wake up the paint. We're gonna lightly swirl around into the well of the paint, not pushing down too hard where it's gonna hurt the paintbrush's bristles. If you need more color, be sure to re-dip into the water so that you can get more of that pigment or color onto your paintbrush. Notice how you can still see the waxy crayon through the watercolor. That's because the watercolor resists or pushes away from the crayon. Now we're gonna wash off of our paintbrush so we can start the next technique. The next technique that we will do is called a wet on wet. That's pretty much exactly how it sounds. We're gonna wet the paper down, then use wet watercolors on top of that wet paper. Wet on wet. So we're gonna take our clean paintbrush and we're gonna use some water to wet down this section of our techniques book. Once it has that shiny look, that's how you know that the paper is wet. Next, you can choose any color you would like, and you're just gonna kinda do some little designs, however you would like this to look. It's gonna give a little bit of a bleeding effect where the watercolor spreads out a little bit because the paper was already wet. You can use a few colors, one color, or all the colors. Just make sure you wash your paintbrush between each color.
take a look at how mine looks. You can see a little bit of that bleeding effect. Now we're ready to start the last technique. And you guys, I think are really gonna like this one. It is a technique using salt. Now the salt we have is Epsom salts. So um, it's a little bit different. They have bigger beads to them rather than your table salt. So that's why I use these instead. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna just pick one color and color in the surface of that area and you want it to be a little bit wet so if yours is looking rather dry and not shiny you might want to add more water like I'm doing here see how shiny mine looks once you have that completed you're gonna get your Epsom salts and take a pinch you do not need a ton a little pinch on top to help absorb some of that extra wateriness. See, I didn't use very much, just a couple pinches and now I'm good to go. Now, you should have a messy mat under your paper. Now, I did not, so I am going to go grab a messy mat, and I'm going to put that underneath of my techniques book. Then, my techniques book will go on to the drying rack right before we line up. So, right now, I need you guys to clean up your area, making sure it's set up just how it was when you came in. When I call your colored team, you need to place your book onto the messy mat and put it onto the drying rack under your class code.